So, dear, uh, dear honorable uh, speakers, uh, friends, so uh, ANS Network, together with the Anti-Corruption Action Center, are honored to organize online international event, which will consist of two panels. A high-level discussion, Ukraine, NATO, Vision 2030, and expert debates way forward with the state security service reform. 2021 sees Ukraine's 30th anniversary of its renewed independence, as well as the cha a change of presidency in the U.S. Renaissance of transatlantic relations is needed to respond to today's and tomorrow's security challenges, which requires strengthening NATO as a powerful military, political, and global alliance. Ukraine's involvement into the uh, discussion on strengthening the political dimension of the alliance, the NATO 2030 concept, is a clear signal of allies' unwavering political and practical support of the Ukrainian state. Ukraine expects uh, that, uh, that uh, revised NATO strategy concept for the nearest 10 years would reconfirm alliance commitment to the open door policy and help help allies to find a way to implement the decision of the 2008 Bucharest summit. It's also an opportune uh, moment to reassess the strategic importance of Ukraine in the post-Soviet space, but also in a global geopolitical context. What is the West geopolitical ambition for the next decade for the whole European continent? How Ukraine's successful transformation could become a powerful contribution to the global democracy agenda aiming at changing Russian Federation? So today, during our first panel, our distinguished speakers will cover the following uh, important issues. 30 years of Ukraine's renewed independence and NATO. Uh, the role of Ukraine in Euro-Atlantic security from Soviet Union collapsed to Putin's hybrid warfare. What is next after the EOP, what could be the MAP perspective accelerate the process of security and defense reform, and what, are, um, what areas need to be focused uh, on to improve interoperability um, and embed reform on practical level. So uh, I think that we uh, today have a really privilege uh, to have with us such honorable speakers. And let me start our discussion with um, a big friend of Ukraine, uh, the president of uh, NATO PA, uh, Mr. Um, Gary Connolly. And uh, Mr. Connolly, let us express our gratitude for all your efforts, for your strong support, and also your resolutions on non-recognition, the Crimea uh, annexation and Russian occupation uh, policy. And um, also, I think, uh, starting from you, we also would like to congratulate the American uh, people with your new president, your new administration, and also um, um, uh, quoting your president that America is back and diplomacy is back at the center of uh, your foreign policy. I think it's really very important to make the alliance uh, stronger and within next uh, decade also to see the new members of the alliance. And so, um, Mr. Connolly, uh, we know also that um, you represent um, also uh, a Georgian caucus in uh, the Congress, and we here in Ukraine do believe that uh, having a unique situation, Joe Biden as a 46th president of the United States and Mr. Connolly as the president of NATO PA, uh, Ukraine and Georgia have a historical chance to receive membership action plan during next years. So, Mr. Connolly, the floor is yours. What is your vision for next decade? And also thanks for your statement yesterday during the Ukraine-NATO Interparliamentary Council and also thank 
thanks for your uh, very proactive position in defending truth, democracy uh, in the um, world, and also supporting Ukraine's uh, transformation in successful uh, country with strong institutions and rule of law. So uh, please, how is your vision of Ukraine, NATO 2030, and uh, what is next after the EOP? Mr. Connolly, so. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks for being with us. So now we already uh, introduced you and also all your work in the Congress supporting Ukraine's tr uh, successful transformation. And also as a president of uh, NATO PA, what is your vision of uh, NATO 2030 and also what is next after EOP for Ukraine? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, I think we have the Ukrainian language link instead of the English language link. Uh, so forgive our confusion. Uh, and uh, I want to thank everybody for being here today for uh, a very timely discussion. Uh, and I also want to thank our former NATO parliamentary uh, Assembly President Rasa for joining us today. It's great to see you again as well. Thank you for your wonderful service to the NATO Parliamentary Assembly. Um, I'm also grateful to Hannah Hopko and Oksana Yurianets for giving the NATO Parliamentary Assembly such a prominent role in this conference. Uh, you were both powerful voices in our assembly on behalf of Ukraine, and it's great to see you both again. You can rest assured that under Yegor's able leadership, Ukraine continues to be represented effectively in our assembly and its deliberations. It's of course a pleasure to see Rasa, who among the many distinctions as former president of our assembly, uh, and last but not least, you've got uh, Philippe, the deputy head of the French delegation to the NATO parliamentary assembly, a true friend of Ukraine. Good to see you, Philippe, as well. 2021 is an important year for Ukraine as you celebrate 30 years since Ukraine regained its independence. This anniversary reminds us of the many hard struggles Ukraine went through under the Soviet Union's repressive regime and its people's hard fought battles to regain independence and set the country on a new and democratic path. Independent Ukraine is paying a high price for the choices it has made. And all of us must stand firmly by your side to defend your freedom, to choose your future. 2021 is also a pivotal moment for NATO. Later this year, NATO, NATO's heads of state and, and government will meet to chart the path for NATO's adaptation through 2030, and hopefully agree to revise NATO's strategic concept. The list of challenges we face is long. First among these is Russia. During the meeting of our Ukraine-NATO Interparliamentary Council yesterday, we reaffirmed our support firmly for NATO's sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. We made very clear we will never accept Russia's forcible and illegal annexation of Crimea and we will continue to condemn its active destabilization of eastern Ukraine, the daily violations of the ceasefire and the ongoing human rights violations in illegally occupied territories. In fact, just yesterday, in the Congress of the United States, I reintroduced the Crimea Annexation Non-Recognition Act, which prohibits U.S. agencies from taking any action that recognizes Russian sovereignty or could be construed 
as recognizing Russian sovereignty in Crimea. That bill passed the House of Representatives uh, in the last Congress by a vote of 427 to 1. It has enormous broad bipartisan support. And that bill is now routinely included in our annual appropriations and defense authorization bills. We will not recognize the forceful and illegal seizure of territory in the 21st century. This is a position that's deeply rooted in American foreign policy through a hundred year policy known as the Stimson Doctrine. As Rasa knows well, it was previously applied through the Wells Declaration with respect to the Soviet occupation of the Baltics throughout the Cold War. The United States stood firm on what was at times viewed as a maybe quixotic policy by non-recognition of the Soviet annexation of the Baltic republics. But now, the Baltic states stand shoulder to shoulder with us in this alliance as free and independent and sovereign states. We must also continue to stand up to Russia's other violations, provocations, and interference while seeking dialogue and cooperation where we can. We must condemn President Putin's ruthless repression against his own people and the politically motivated persecution against his opponents, Mr. Navalny being only the latest example. At the same time, we must urgently start developing a shared approach to China, as our assembly has called for. We must continue to combat terrorism, address instability in our southern neighborhood, deal with the climate crisis, and revive the global arms control agenda and infrastructure. These threats we face together require us to adapt militarily. I know Ukraine has made much progress in this regard. I want to pay tribute in particular to Ukraine's remarkable contribution to NATO missions and operations and salute all the men and women of the Ukrainian armed forces for their exceptional service. But we must also adapt politically. NATO is an alliance underpinned by common values, democratic values, which have been pivotal in maintaining the alliance cohesion for seven decades. It's a testament to the triumph of liberal democracy that Ukraine and other countries continue to want to join the alliance along those terms. These values are the strongest weapon we possess to effectively counter Vladimir Putin or President Xi's authoritarianism. That's why, as part of the NATO 2030 reflection process, I propose the establishment of a coordination center for democratic resilience within NATO at its headquarters, which would help NATO countries and aspirant countries strengthen their dem democratic institutions, promote election integrity, and combat subversive activities by foreign governments. As events in my own country on January 6th with the storming of the United States Capitol certainly show, democracy is resilient, but it's also fragile. And there are threats from within as well as without. I was glad to see the idea endorsed by the group of experts tasked by the Secretary General of NATO with producing a slate of recommendations on how NATO can strengthen itself politically in the coming decade. But events at the beginning of this year show, as I said, that democracy is fragile. We've got to constantly work to protect it, expand it, strengthen our ability, resist and counter attempts from within as well as without that might seek to undermine it. This is why further reforms in Ukraine remain vitally important. Ukraine must make continued progress, fighting corruption, strengthening the rule of law, democratic control of security services, and reforming the economy. Obviously, this must be done for Ukraine's and the population's prosperity, but also because it's in the best defense against Russia's interference and your best response to Russia's authoritarianism. Democratic consolidation is what will pave the way for further Euro-Atlantic integration. Our new administration in the United States is committed to rebuilding our alliances, starting with NATO and restoring the United States' standing in the world. 
As you know, President Biden knows Ukraine very well. As President Obama's vice president, he was responsive and responsible for U.S. policy on Ukraine. And as president, I expect him to reinforce support for Ukraine on a bipartisan basis. In his first week as Secretary of State, uh, the Honorable Anthony Blinken spoke with Kuleba, expressing U.S. support and pledging continued robustness. As you may know, the United States Congress have been a firm supporter of Ukraine's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and Euro Atlantic aspirations. And I've been a firm opponent of Russia's actions in Ukraine. Today, all of us come together because we believe in Ukraine's Euro Atlantic actions of democratic consolidation. Two years ago, almost to the day, the Ukrainian parliament decided to enshrine Ukraine's ambition to join NATO and the EU in its constitution, thereby providing a clear goal and perspective for the Ukrainian people. I hope that soon Ukraine will be on the threshold of NATO membership. To do so, it's essential that all of us continue to play our part in the great transformation that Ukraine is undergoing. In turn, you can count on our continued support our counsel and our assistance. Thank you again for having me, and I wish all of you a very fruitful conference. God bless. God bless America, God bless Ukraine and the European continent. Mr. Connolly, uh, thank you so much for your um, uh, um, statement. We um, um, express our gratitude for all your efforts, your strong position uh, within a years uh, from um, the beginning of Russian military uh, and military aggression against Ukraine, uh, uh, you submitted resolutions on uh, territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. So many thanks for your efforts. And um, also, as I mentioned before, and I hope now you can hear me in English and you see the channel with uh, English translation. So um, we do believe that uh, uh, having a unique situation, Joe Biden, as the 46th president of the United States, and you, Mr. Connolly, as the president of NATO PA, Ukraine and Georgia have an historical chance to receive membership action plan during next years. And um, also, uh, Mr. Connolly, uh, what is the possibility that you with your colleagues uh, could submit a bipartisan resolution for NATO enlargement for Ukraine and Georgia and initiate a committee's hearing on this issue? And also, it's uh, important that um, uh, we uh, would be happy to see a special coordinator for NATO enlargement for Ukraine and Georgia within Biden administration as Ambassador uh, Daniel Fried, uh, who crafted the policy of NATO enlargement to central uh, European nations, advancing the goal of Europe free and at peace. So, uh, Mr. Connolly, thanks for uh, being a champion, uh, supporting Ukraine's democratic transformation, and also thanks for your statement yesterday at Ukraine NATO Interparliamentary Council. And now we are giving the floor to Rasa Yuknyavinche, uh, our good friend, uh, former Minister of Defense of Lithuania and um, also uh, uh, president of a parliamentary, uh, NATO Parliamentary Assembly in 2018. So, um, Rasa, what is the uh, strategy of NATO within next decade, how to uh, uh, counter Russian hybrid warfare, Chinese, uh, also um, attacks, and um, we, are we are here in Ukraine doing our best to receive membership action plan, uh, because, you know, uh, in, in the Constitution we incorporated our strategic goal to become members of NATO and the EU. So please, how do you see next decade with the optimism, and I hope Ukraine and Georgia will join to NATO within the next 10 years. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you all. Uh, very nice to see many good friends. Uh, despite the situation that we can 
uh, meet each other on Zoom platform, but I think it's also uh, something new and very useful for all of us to, to do that. In a few minutes, I will uh, uh, leave for the debates uh, in plenary, European Parliament plenary on Borel visit to Moscow. So I have a very important day exactly now. And uh, but I, of course, my pleasure to give some of my thoughts on uh, the topic you decided to discuss. Uh, I also will start mentioning two years ago the uh, about the. Uh, principle of Euro-Atlantic integration was introduced into constitution of Ukraine. It was really a very important uh, step forward, and I am sure that in my lifetime I will celebrate your membership in NATO. Uh, today is the right time to speak about the status of transatlantic relation, relations as such. Uh, and um, not only about Ukraine, because it is important for, for countries like Georgia, like Ukraine, and uh, the whole region. Uh, contemporary US-EU relations are based on the history of the end of World War II. NATO is practical expression of North American-European post-war relations. And it is more than obvious that NATO is the most successful political defense alliance in history. When considering current relations and future goals, we must uh, not forget why NATO was formed in 1949 and later the EU under that umbrella in order to prevent the expansion of the Stalinist USSR further to the West. Today, when we look to Russia and current situation, we are in a bit similar situation, unfortunately. After a few decades of dreaming about Europe from Lisbon to Vladivostok, we need to rethink our relationship with the aggressive Kremlin regime that worships Stalin and poisons people uh, with uh, using chemical weapons. Uh, the transatlantic connection must ensure that aggression is contained. We need containment again, containment of Putin regime. Logic says that after Borrell's visit to Moscow last week, there should be no more dreams that Putin will change and that Europe from Lisbon to Vladivostok is possible with this regime. In this sense, Borrell's visit was a success. I hope it's end of dreams, uh, not uh, realistic dreams. The situation is only getting worse and will get worse in that country. That is why a strong common transatlantic policy is needed today more than ever, like it was in 1949. I will not focus only on Russian factor in this policy. The search for a more coordinated policy towards China and other emerging security issues are also relevant here. There is one of the most important criteria and vector that must unite EU, US strategy, tactics and actions the protection, development, and consolidation of democracy on the European continent, including Ukraine, of course. In this sense, I also imagine Europe from Lisbon to Vladivostok. It must be a democratic space without Lukashenko and Putin. Democracy is a key word when we speak about transatlantic bond. This is the only way to understand the common long-term goals of transatlantic relations. The future of Ukraine is one of the most important cornerstones here, because without Ukraine, without Ukraine, Putin, uh, uh, the Kremlin cannot build its own empire. 
Today, we see that Belarus is no longer a guaranteed member of the Kremlin alliance. Therefore, in order to have peace in Europe, we must support the nations that are striving for democracy and freedom, because democracies never are at war. Antony Blinken's idea of map is important to Georgia, but not only for Georgia. This would pave the way and unblock de facto existing Kremlin factor for NATO's further enlargement in Europe. Ukraine itself should have more faith in the possibility of its Euro-Atlantic integration, believe, more believe, including your government and political elite, in the opportunity to follow the path of European integration more vigorously. Ukraine has many friends in the European Parliament. And although Russia and Belarus are at the top of the debates today, however, it is part of Ukraine's agenda as well. It's very important for Ukraine as well. Because the Belarusians are also fighting for the freedom of the Ukrainians. The Russian people are watching, seeing, and also trying to rise from the terrible destruction. Today, by the way, we all together need to help the Russian people. Because they are ruled by Putin, the world's greatest Russophobe. Because he is afraid of Russian people, not we. Ukrainian's role is crucial here. Putin fears this role no less than the voice of his own nation. I will stop here saying Slava Ukraini. Heroiam Slava, thank you so much, Rasa, uh, for being a champion within the European Parliament and also on behalf of Lithuania, uh, supporting Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova. And it's true that uh, in Eastern Partnership, uh, Ukraine is a trendsetter, agenda setter of transformation, which is really important also for Russian uh, society because the successful Ukraine is a nightmare for Mr. Putin, but a good example for Russian citizens, for people in Belarus fighting for freedom, dignity, and democracy. So thanks for being with us all these years, supporting our reforms, and um, also please pass our best greetings to your colleagues from European Parliament, and um, during this weekend, our delegation on behalf uh, 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 with our Prime Minister is in Brussels. So. We are moving towards our strategic goal to reach membership uh, perspective uh, in NATO and the EU. So thank you for your uh, support, Rasa. And also, as I told to uh, Mr. Connolly, uh, current president of NATO PA, that it would be important also to see uh, on behalf of the new presidential uh, administration of the US a special coordinator for NATO enlargement for Ukraine and Georgia as Ambassador Daniel Fried used to be, uh, and he crafted um, the policy of NATO enlargement for Central uh, European nations like Poland, Hungary. So I think uh, uh, um, the more we have ambition plan for Ukraine and Georgia, uh, this is the, our response on Russian uh, hybrid warfare. And uh, as you know that uh, at the end of January, Ukrainian parliament adopted in the first reading very important draft on state security service reform. And now I would like to give a floor to uh, Igor Chernyev, who is the head of Ukrainian delegation to uh, Parliamentary Assembly of NATO, and uh, uh, ask Igor a question. Igor, what is next after enhanced uh, EOP? And uh, do you think, is there a political will in the parliament to adopt not just one state security service reform, but um, the uh, comprehensive package needed to meet the criteria and to, together with Georgia, to receive membership action plan during the uh, NATO summit? Well, thank you. Thank you for your um, invitation to this uh, really important, I think, discussion for our 
further um, future, I think further future. Uh, well, just let's check. Um, do you hear me in English, Philip? F Philip? Okay, do you hear me? Yes, do you hear do me? Do you hear me? Um, do you hear yeah, me in English? I hear you. I hear you what you Uh, can we switch off in uh, Ukrainian translation right now? I don't have any system of translation, so I hear you only when you speak in English. And please tell me if when I will have to speak, if I can speak in French, and do you have a translator for the Ukrainian people, please? Um, we, uh, okay. Uh, Philip, do you hear me in English right now? Yes. Okay, good. So um, we mm, don't have uh, translations from French to English. If you don't mind, can you can you speak in English? Is it so? I will try, but it will be very limited for me. I'm sorry about this. Okay, it's not a, it's not a problem. Uh, well, first of all, first of all, thank you for your um, for your time and uh, that you and for your attention and your support. I know that uh, you're a great supporter of Ukraine in NATO. I, I remember your um, disturbing remark to some of presentation when um, the picture was uh, the Crimea as a, with the border of of, of Russia Federation, and you said. That no, it's 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 not true. It's uh, Ukrainian territory, and uh, so thank you, thank you for your support. Yeah, well, actually, we um, want to discuss several uh, questions about uh, several issues about uh, Ukrainian pass to to NATO. Uh, because, uh, well, first of all, we have the problem, not problem, we have the war with uh, Russian Federation and ongoing aggression from, from this country, unfortunately. Uh, more of that, uh, we have, uh, we see that Russian Federation tried to um, enhance their power in the Black Sea region and we have to um, uh, we have to react on this, uh, not only Ukraine, but the NATO, and I think it should be the common actions, common decision, uh, and the, maybe some new platform uh, with a cooperation with the NATO. Also, we have to uh, renew all our um, our relationship with uh, with uh, the on the NATO Ukraine Commission at high level because it's fact uh, factually it's uh, uh, blocked right now and uh, we can't move forward uh, and maybe the most important thing it's actually receiving of the MEP membership action plan for Ukraine. And I think we have right now the window of opportunity because of the um, new ge geopolitical uh, situation in, in, in the world we, because of new administration in the USA, because of um, strong support of the um, EU, Canada, Great Britain uh, of us, I think, and we clearly understand that um, receiving the membership map uh, of Ukraine, it's not only about our homework. We do this homework. We, I, and I um, definitely think that we will adopt all the needed uh, laws about security service, about intelligence service, about, uh, well, we have also, we already adopted about the intelligence service, about the state secret. Uh, so, but we clearly understand that it's not enough. Because, um, Actually, MAP is a political decision. First of all, political decision which should be adopted by the parliaments of the alias. And in this way, we have to be, we have to have support, strong support from, um, I hope, from Jerry Connolly, 
who was here in this uh, discussion before, from Rasa, from all our um, partners all over the world. We understand that we have to uh, organize bilateral, and we will organize bilateral um, communication and um, relations with all the members of, uh, of, of NATO to understand what exactly we have to do from our side um, to, to, to achieve our map. Uh, we also understand that some countries has, have um, their own interests with collaboration with Russian Federation. It's pity that uh, we see business as usual after the Russia Federation aggression uh, since 2014. But we understand that it's economical interest, it's some um, social interest, internal interest of these countries, and we have to find this solution, what we can propose um, these countries from the Ukrainian side to have their support when the decision of the map will be on the table. Um, and I hope, uh, Philip, uh, for your support, I know that uh, we have your support, <laughs> always have your support. Uh, maybe uh, I can rely on your support in some bilateral um, communication with other countries, because I know that not uh, all allies uh, want to see in the further future, Ukraine as a member of, of, of the NATO. So I hope for our fruitful collaboration in the nearest future. Thank you. Thank you, Igor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Connolly, as the president of NATO Parliamentary Assembly. Rasa Yuknyavich and Fodea, wonderful statements. And um, of course, today during our Ukraine NATO Vision 2030 discussion, and this is why we invited representatives of national parliaments from US Congress, from uh, France, uh, also from um, with the experience of Lithuanian Seimas. And uh, now the floors. Uh, uh, the floor is um, yours, Mr. Philippe. Je ne parle pas français, so I could not translate into uh, <laughs> your speech in in French. So <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, um, but please, uh, if you could uh, speak in English, we will be very thankful for you, and also uh, let us gratitude you for visiting Ukraine, Kyiv, Lviv, and yes. all your efforts, because one of the topics that today we are discussing was is the West geopolitical ambition for the next decade for the whole European continent. And of course, what is the role of Ukraine as a trendsetter, and um, Rasa already mentioned a uh, hybrid threat to democracy, disinformation, situation in uh, Belarus, in uh, Russian Federation with imprisonment of uh, Navalny. So I think that successful Ukraine is crucially important for the transformation of the whole post-Soviet space. So please, how do you see the next decade, Ukraine and NATO? And of course, after the pandemic, uh, we do believe that the NATO Parliamentary Assembly, uh, which had to be in 2020, finally will be conducted next year in Kyiv. So this will be a unique opportunity to uh, see more than 600 participants higher level discussing uh, how to strengthen NATO as a powerful military, political, and global alliance. So, Philippe, please. Uh, and and ju just one remark, Philippe. Uh, as we discussed before, you are welcome to Ukraine, uh, to Donbass, and uh, we, are, we are waiting you. And well, we, uh, with this pandemic, uh, we uh, had to 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 uh, postpone here yeah, our uh, your our meeting in Ukraine. So I hope uh, in the nearest future you will be in Ukraine, and we will show you 
all Ukraine from Donbass to Odessa to Lviv and what all what do you want? Thank you. Thank you very much. And you, um, Anna, you get a very, very nice French accent when you speak French. It's certainly one of the reasons that I am loving with Ukraine. That, uh, and all of, also the, the way you receive me each time. And I have to uh, thank again, Diego, for this invitation. And uh, be sure I will be uh, with you as soon as possible and to come back and leave too, um, to, uh, to, be, um, to drink the best coffee of the world. Because I remember that in Lviv, I was, it was a, a very uh, famous cafe, coffee everywhere, and it missed me. So be sure I will be back. And how you told it before, and uh, before I thank Raza uh, and Gary Connolly for they say about the, this optimism we get from your next decade, uh, I would like to tell to, your, to the people who hear us that uh, I have been five or six times now in Ukraine. And it's different part in Lviv, in Kiev, in Odessa, in Donbass. And I have been lucky to be there for your presidential uh, polling and the legislative polling, the parliament polling. So it was a very good experience for me and talk with a lot of people. People who were going to the polling station and spend a lot of time to talk with them. And uh, when I hear what I hear with those people, it's the same thing that I hear when I'm working on the NATO parliamentary uh, with uh, Oksana, with there, and I thank her for this invitation, for this meeting. Thank you very much, Oksana, because between um, uh, 1917 and, and 19, uh, 1920, we worked together, and it was a very a, a good, a good relation with all of MPs from Ukraine. And during these three years, I spent in the NATO uh, Ukraine NATO Parliamentary Committee. Uh, I found the same uh, works, the same um, uh, minding in your population when I was uh, uh, for the uh, summer uh, 19 uh, and hearing the people. So it's why I'm very, very optimistic for your future. I see a, a population on works. I see a population on progress. And it's why I'm working, and it's why I'm involving in that committee to hear your parliamentaries, to hear all the progress you do, and to, um, to, to have circumstances to explain to my people, to my colleagues on Parliament, that we have to help and support this country, who is a brother of us, is a European country, is a brother of us. And the peace, um, we say the peacekeeping, uh, has to be a priority, because you are in the European continent, and we want to live in peace everywhere in this continent. So it's why, with some of my colleagues, we were seven or eight French MP, I don't remember exactly, and we traveled to the Donbass to see the red line, to see how it was, was there, how was uh, the, 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 the lonely less population we stay in this part of the country. And uh, uh, we saw the disaster. Seems this time, I try to know how it's happened in the border. And um, not far away, last month, we used to reach a ceases fire. But when I see the reality, I see that we still have clashes. We still have bombardments with died soldiers or wounded soldiers. So 
this is for me a, a very strong preoccupation because those clashes, those bombardments are happening on the door of the Europe. So it's why I continue for the next three years my job in this committee to hear you, different MPs from Ukraine, to hear all the news you can give us that about the, the, the work you do inside the country to reach the levels we expect from you and to hear you about what's happened with your dangerous neighbor. And also, you know that France, um, the French president of France, uh, used to talk with the Russian president. But in each time, Ukraine is the first line of the discussion. There is no other way for us. The integrity of your country has to be um, reached again. No other way. And I am very um, optimist, too, that we succeed in this. We don't want democracy did only one foot behind. For us, there is no option. And we want that the democracy, that the freedom border, still on the east, east of your country. So we are very preoccupied by this. We talk everybody every time with this. I see one by month the French Minister of Foreign Affairs, and all the time we have a discussion about this, and his position is still the same. And it's a wall between what's happened East years on you and what's happened with you in Europe. So for the next decade, I'm convicted that you will be very, um, uh, you will be at the rendezvous with all the, the transformation of the laws we expect from Ukraine. I'm, I have no doubt about this. For the future with NATO and the Europe, your destiny is the same destiny than the NATO or the Europe. We are now with the crisis, the healthy crisis, at the, at the step of the new step for everybody. And uh, we all have to grow up and we all have to change after this. And I think this um, way of changing will be include will include all the European countries. And it's why I'm very optimistic about your future and our future, because you will bring many things with you that you will give to the European people. And I ex expected that very much. I'm sorry for this English, very sorry, sorry for your people, you hear me like this. De Philippe, your English is my better than my French is. <laughs> so definitely we have to visit Paris again uh, and uh, yes. to improve our language. So, and you know, we love uh, France because um, uh, Anna Kievska uh, uh, used to be the queen of France. And by the way, last year in a uh, uh, yes. small city of uh, Western Ukraine, Ukraine, Lutsk, your ambassador here opened the monument of Anna Kievska on her road to Paris. So I think, yes. and also this is another issue why I'm mentioning this, because uh, you remember that uh, Putin wanted to steal our history, uh, saying that Anna Kievska is a Russian princess which is uh, just lie. And uh, by the way, 2021 is the year of 300th anniversary when Peter the Great renamed Moscovia into uh, Rus, Russian uh, Russia, by, uh, 
actually stealing our history. And so now, uh, thanks for believing in Ukraine and um, Ukraine uh, future, uh, we will do our best, uh, uh, reform-minded people, change-maker generation. And now uh, uh, I'm so happy to give the floor to Oksana Yurinets, the former head of uh, parliamentary um, of Ukrainian delegation to uh, NATO PA. And it's for me, it's like a, a big privilege to see Oksana and now you Gore uh, showing the institutional, uh, how to say, uh, continuity from uh, women leadership to men's power. But I think it's um, important to see this uh, harmony when we have a tradition of generations and Verkhovna Rada convocations, eight and now nine, uh, nine working together on one, uh, on achieving one strategic goal. So uh, Oksana, now you are working as a professor at Lviv Polytechnic University. And it's also too important to improve public awareness about NATO um, uh, and um, how do you assess uh, the next steps and uh, what is uh, really important after the EOP. And also let me use this uh, momentum to express our gratitude to Madeleine Moon, uh, also former uh, president of Parliamentary uh, Assembly of NATO, and uh, Ruxandra Popa for helping us and supporting during the organizing this event. So, Oksana, please, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, good, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Hanna. Dear president of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly, uh, Presidents uh, of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly, Rasik Nyavichina, and Mr. Jerry Connolly, Dia Philippe Michel, uh, Kleber, and uh, Yehor. It is my pleasure to con convey a greeting for Madeleine Moon, former president of the NATO PA. Uh, one again, thank you, our international partners. You are true uh, friends of Ukraine who have been uh, to Ukraine, to Kiev, Lviv, and other cities, and the est uh, near the front line of the occupied Donbass. Thank you for clay, uh, contribution to the peace and the security of the region. During the last uh, few years, the proactive position of the NATO PA and its clearly co coordinated action have uh, any uh, enable this change uh, towards Ukraine's Euro-Atlantic integration. Change in the constitution of Ukraine are a um, uh, movement in this direction. During uh, these two years, owing to everyone working together and the unchanging position of the, all, all those involved with uh, this process, the program for five years was uh, adopt, uh, adopted in 2020. For the first time in the history of our state as a clear course uh, toward NATO. This next important step is to uh, uh, review uh, uh, the law of uh, reform of the security service of Ukraine. As the head of the parliamentary delegation of 2018-2019, I thank you, Igor Cherny, for uh, continuing the clear Euro-Atlantic integration course. Uh, this is uh, one important uh, signal for uh, consolidate, uh, consolidation of uh, partners in mutual cooperation. Uh, today, I am professor in Lviv Polytechnic National University. I talk to students about the importance of Euro-Atlantic uh, Atlantic integration. Young people uh, should not only know about is the course incorporated in the Constitution, but should also be ready to implement it. I also cooperate with local government of implement of the course. It is important and priority. Ukraine will become a member of NATO because this is the only right way. Thank you very much, my dear friends, and uh, merci beaucoup, Michel. And uh, maybe in the future is a good time for our uh, countries and uh, NATO Parliamentary Assembly, and uh, Ukraine will be a member of NATO. Thank you. 
Thank you, Oksana. So uh, let us uh, conclude with the final words of uh, Igor, who will make a summary of all speakers representing Parliamentary Assembly of NATO. And I hope uh, optimistic <laughs> vision for 2030 for Ukraine and Georgia. Well, yes, I think with this support of the, our great partners like uh, the US, uh, the Great Britain, the uh, Canada, France, uh, we will have, um, I hope, short way to the membership action plan and then to membership to, to the NATO. Actually, um, since 2008, we, um, we have done a lot of things uh, according to our annual um, nation plan because every year we have um, this home task agreed with the NATO and we do a lot on this way and I think and actually these uh, tasks it's a part of uh, the f f future uh, membership action plan so um, from my perspective we did a lot from the uh, from the map and we have some um i have some optimistic view about uh, that between receiving map and receiving membership we will have not 10 years like some countries in in europe but shorter period but before this of course we have to receive map and we will do all the best from our side in all the levels, diplomacy, um, parliamentary, uh, government level, and the highest level of uh, president uh, to achieve this goal for, I hope, this year on the summit NATO 2021. Thank you, Igor. And according to NATO, Ukraine is the only non-NATO partner nation to have contributed uh, actively to all NATO-led operations and missions for the past two decades. So definitely we could say that uh, NATO will benefit from Ukraine's joining to the alliance and also Georgia, Georgia uh, joining to the alliance. This is why today's uh, key question was what is the strategy for next decade and how to counter Russian hybrid warfare and how to think about the democracy in Belarus, in uh, uh, Russian Federation by making Ukraine and Georgia successful. And Philippe, I see your uh, hand, so you wanted also uh, to add uh, your final uh, words before we move to the next panel, so please, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. I, I want to, to speak about what Yegor just said. Why? It's very important that you continue the, the big works you are doing in internal. Why? Because things will change with Joe Biden now. Why? When he's arrived, he just elected, and he found a very old situation. Old, it's six year situation on Donbass. And he has to make his um, mandate a success, he has to change the things. So, for me, in the next one or two years, maximum, he will do a move, but a very big foot with what happened on the eastern border of the Europe. More now than uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Joseph and the, the, the Euro, um, the Euro Commission uh, has been, um, how you say, um, uh, I don't know the, the word in English, but um, with what would happen just now, Mr. Biden has to do a move, and I, I'm, I'm sure he will do it. So in the next uh, 18 or 20 months, there is a big foot 
uh, in a big step uh, forward by Joe Biden on this problem. Thank you, Philippe. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning of our online international forum, of course, we do believe that uh, Joe Biden presidency in the United States and also uh, Mr. Connolly uh, as a president of NATO PA, both of them, together with Ukrainians who are fighting for uh, reforming our country and also with the support from Canada, UK, European Union, France, Germany, we will make this breakthrough and within next uh, years, Ukraine and Georgia will receive membership action plan because we are defending uh, European continent from Russian aggression. We, we are, uh, Ukraine became a contributor of European security. And of course, we would like to strengthen uh, NATO as a, a strong military, political, and security alliance. So this is our uh, homework. This is our geopolitical uh, goal uh, incorporated into constitution. And this is also our civilizational choice when Ukrainian citizens during Euromaidan in 2014 did. So, so our fight continues. Uh, and uh, thanks, Yehor, thanks, Oksana, thanks, Philippe, uh, uh, merci, uh, and also thanks to uh, um, uh, Mr. Connolly and uh, Rasa for this uh, first panel discussion. And uh, now the next panel is um, way forward with the state security service uh, reform. Uh, the panel will be dedicated to the achievements and challenges of building transparency and accountability accountability in Ukraine's defense and security sector. So what are the key issues which need to be addressed? How to ensure that state security uh, service reform is focused exclusively, uh, exclusively on its core activities? And also how to depolitize uh, the service. So, and the speakers of next panel is Mariana Bezugla, member of Ukrainian parliament, head of the working group on the uh, SBU draft law, state uh, security service. Also, um, uh, let me uh, also uh, express our gratitude for uh, Alexander Vinnikov, uh, who is today with us, and also Anti Yuhani Hartikanainen, um, and of course Vitaly Shabunin, uh, uh, who is representing the Anti Corruption Action Center. So I think um, it's really important to mention that on January 28, Ukrainian parliament did an important step towards making this goal come true. Specifically, started a reform of the country's uh, counterintelligence service, the Security Service of Ukraine, SBU. The Rada has adopted the draft law on the SBU, but, it's need, uh, but it needs amending before the second reading to ensure it uh, fully corresponds with the best Euro-Atlantic standards. And uh, for those who, uh, who doesn't know, Mariana Bezugla is a true champion uh, who uh, was fighting in the session hall in the parliament to make uh, this draft law um, uh, um, adoption in the first reading. And Mariana, could you please tell us more about, as a head of the working group, uh, um, about the preparation for the second reading and what kind of support from civil society, from international partners you need that this law is adopted in the second reading and it meets uh, international standards and of course in uh, also defend our national interests. So thank you because I remember uh, my convocation in 2018 when we were adopting the law on national security. Unfortunately, the amendments on state security service reform wasn't uh, approved by the parliament because a big sabotage, uh, a big counter uh, actions from different people. So uh, you are now, uh, you are our hero. And but uh, still, how could we help that in the second reading we received a truly um, reformatic law on state security uh, uh, service reform? So please, the floor is yours. 
Thank you uh, so much for good words, and uh, it's it's great pleasure that we have such event, and uh, also it's actually it's a great pleasure that uh, there is some uh, continuity of uh, advocating and uh, discussing the process. Uh, speaking about what help do we need? Actually, it's like a common uh, common work. And I will uh, divide it into components. Uh, first, of course, it's to work uh, to make the final project uh, as best as possible, uh, realistic and uh, according to uh, common sense and uh, common practices uh, uh, to make this Ukrainian security service a reliable, from one side, a reliable partner. From other side is just like not the side, but uh, in the complex uh, uh, to make it uh, well, have, um, full with capacity uh, to fight uh, against uh, different threats and to work with the challenges uh, our country have, has. Uh, and the second component, uh, what we need to do uh, now, it's to be sure. Uh, to to make uh, the circumstance, circumstances and the process in that way that to make it irreversible. Uh, actually, of course, uh, that what is happened, it uh, it made a lot to make it irreversible because taken uh, just like to go forward because uh, when we are. Uh, Speaking about the history of transformation of security service, actually transformation, uh, because we did not have uh, uh, reform of uh, this body, uh, it it is the history of uh, almost 30 years, and uh, uh, many pe uh, many uh, people, many experts, even uh, know about that. Uh, officially, the reform is about 15 years. And uh, some kind of intensive discussions uh, um, uh, took place for uh, several years. And uh, uh, such continuity of discussion without some concrete uh, steps, uh, it's a history of uh, this reform. Uh, now we have the first stage passed. Uh, it's um, uh, the parliament supported uh, the draft in the first reading. It means uh, that uh, uh, parliament supported the concept, uh, the overall structure of transformation, the main ideas. And also I need to emphasize that uh, uh, actually it's not just like new draft of uh, SSU law. Um, it's like a package, uh, massive. Uh, of regulations uh, on the level of law and also some instructions concerning the under law acts, uh, which uh, is about to regulate all the field, all the branch of uh, how security service can uh, should exist and how it works and how it uh, what uh, is the interaction between other um, uh, bodies. Uh, uh, and points in the security and defense sector. Uh, so actually, it's a, uh, the package of changes in about 40 uh, different laws and also additional instructions on uh, for under law acts. Um, frankly, I can speak about it for ages, so I just ask, kindly ask moderators to stop me. And if you have additional questions, uh, I will be happy to answer. Uh, so, and um, about uh, the work uh, between readings, uh, of course, it, it, it is not some kind of one week or two weeks. It, it's obviously uh, we are expecting at least uh, two months of intensive work. Now, just uh, now, uh, the 11th of uh, February is the last call to get the additional um proposals from offices of members of parliaments uh in from all the uh, from the whole parliament from different committees and then uh just uh, we need about two weeks to um aggregate all the amendments 
uh, to work with them uh, as a uh, according to the overall concept or not and so on and then to work uh, in the working group uh, also taking into account that when the law the project of the law was registered we sent uh, the request uh, to get expertise on this registered draft uh, to different uh, bodies uh, it's, it's uh, administration uh, it's just like ministries uh, uh, national security council etc it's also different uh, non-governmental organizations and uh, also it's our uh, dear partners uh, our uh, consulting group uh, group to make the consultation our uh, international consulting group may say in this way and uh, of course we are thankful that uh, uh, frankly we got about 300 pages of expertise and need to work on it uh, so uh, what about uh, I, maybe i i will uh, talk a little bit about those resistance we have while uh, pushing the law in the parliament. Uh, it was just like a rather dramatic story. Uh, be, uh, as example, um, uh, the representatives from security service, I will not uh, talk about some kind of uh, uh, certain individuals, personalities or leadership of security service because it's like to deal with the system, which wa was not transformed in any way uh, uh, during the years. And of course, we had some transformation also taking into account the aggression of the Russian Federation and uh, good points in effectiveness of security service, but the whole system is still, uh, was still stable in an untransformed uh, uh, way. Uh, so, uh, representatives of security service and different connected persons and groups uh, connected with the members of parliament uh, asked them not to vote, uh, asked uh, not to support this idea, and so and so on. Uh, we had it permanently uh, before the first reading, and frankly, uh, the, uh, even the procedure of voting for the first reader a reading was something like a, a special operation in the parliament uh, because uh, all that uh, when uh, security service uh, may I say like saw it in the list of uh, to be voted today uh, the wave of reaction and challenges uh, uh, became even stronger so we uh, had to uh, play in some way with the list of uh, uh, you know of the order of the laws to be voted uh, to uh, calm down uh, such a reaction and also connection with our members of parliament uh, but it's not Thanks. just like uh, something new it's like a resistance of the system uh, of transformation. And it's obvious to say that we need this transformation, need for our Ukrainian security and also for our Euro-Atlantic integration. And uh, uh, as I previously said, to be the reliable partner and to go forward. Thank you. Uh, so it's just like a broad picture. Uh, if you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Mariana. I'm sure that there will be some questions and we have online translations. So people, we already received questions. Is it possible for Ukraine together with Georgia to receive membership action plan this year? So maybe we will move with this question to uh, Alexander Vinnikov and <laughs> ask what if Ukrainian parliament, for example, in a April or May adopt state security service reform uh, in the second region and it will meet the NATO uh, standards. So my questions, uh, my questions, Alexander, to you, uh, to you, what are the most important aspects of SBU reform for uh, the Ukraine NATO integration? Which NATO standards should still be implemented during the reform? And what improvements are expected within the draft law before the second reading? And I remember how 
proactively you uh, personally and also uh, your team from NATO representations uh, office to Ukraine uh, used to work in the aid convocation and now I know also about your contribution. So um, Alexander, you already heard uh, Mariana's uh, um, updates. So uh, could you please Thank respond you to, uh, Thank you but Mariana, please, uh, yeah, uh, we are really supporting you and we hope with having such good uh, 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 partners like NATO office in Ukraine. So uh, we will uh, do our best to see the law adopted in second reading. So Alexander, so please could you uh, respond on three questions to you? Thank you very much, uh, dear Hannah and dear Mariana. It's great to see all of you. Um, thank you for this invitation. I think uh, the idea of having this event uh, is an extremely timely one, and we're happy to, to join. Um, particularly happy to see uh, civil society being so actively involved in following developments that are related to your country's Euro-Atlantic aspirations. Um, now, the topic of discussion today, the reform of the security service, um, clearly is of interest to us. Uh, we have been, as the Alliance, uh, supporting the reform process for quite a long time. Um, we believe that a modern and efficient uh, security service that is in line with your Atlantic principles and best practices will benefit all Ukrainians. And therefore, we, we welcome a wide uh, discussion and debate on this issue uh, that includes all the key stakeholders, including civil society, of course. So I'm pleased to share a few thoughts uh, about this historic reform process uh, on behalf of, of the Alliance. And in my brief remarks, I will focus on two aspects. Uh, first, what we see as achievements, and secondly, where we see challenges and opportunities. And I think, Hannah, this, this goes some way to replying to, to those questions. Now, um, reform of the SBU clearly, as you mentioned, uh, remains a key aspect of Ukraine's European and Euro-Atlantic integration efforts. And NATO therefore welcomed the approval of the corresponding draft law in first reading, and we see it as a significant development. Um, I would like to commend the efforts um, of the Verkhovna Rada as a whole uh, and, of course, uh, other stakeholders as well, uh, with whom we have built an excellent relationship over the past few years. Um, and I will join Hannah in, in complimenting also uh, Mariana's personal leadership as part of the National Security, Defense and Intelligence Committee. Uh, which, which really was the driver of this process and continues to be the, the driver. Um, we were very pleased to see that this draft law uh, was supported in first reading by several factions, including by members of the opposition. Um, I think it's an important signal that indicates that this topic is clearly seen as an issue of national importance, and uh, this is uh, valid across the political spectrum. We have also noted uh, President Zelensky's recent public statements in support of SBU reform. And I think that all of this shows widespread political consensus today in Ukraine that the service needs to be uh, reformed in order to focus better on its core tasks, which are defined in Ukraine's law and national security. Uh, and those are counterintelligence, counterterrorism, and the protection of state secrets. Now, as we all know, uh, this reform is and will be a very long and challenging process. Um, but of course, a long journey starts with the first step. And we believe that the, the draft law adopted in first reading is an important step on Ukraine's Euro-Atlantic path. And jointly with our longstanding partners from the International Advisory Group, the EU and the US, NATO stands ready to further support Ukraine on this path. Uh, we commit to standing with Ukraine through the development and the adoption and implementation of this uh, important piece of legislation. Um, and so Ukraine can rest assured that it will not be alone in this process. 
Now, turning to some of the, the challenges that are still outstanding uh, and which also offer opportunities, uh, I'd like to, to first of all highlight that um, the international partners cannot provide Ukraine with a off-the-shelf template or, or an ideal standard model of how an internal security service should be organized. Uh, this is something that each nation uh, must decide for itself uh, freely and independently, uh, taking into account the realities uh, that the country is, is facing. Uh, what we as NATO can do, however, is to analyze proposed solutions and assess uh, to what extent they are in line with Euro-Atlantic principles and best practices. And in this regard, our advice and recommendations uh, consist of preserving and protecting some provisions of the draft law as it develops further. Uh, now, these include the very important phasing out of pretrial investigative powers, uh, the downsizing and transforming of the service into a civilian entity, and uh, streamlining the service's role and responsibility regarding uh, combating organized crime. At the same time, uh, in our view, additional work is required to further refine terminology uh, and clarify some provisions on uh, judicial and financial control in particular. Well, we also think that some elements of the law could be further improved to reflect democratic standards regarding human rights and fundamental freedoms. Another uh, key aspect of the, of the law, law will be effective parliamentary oversight. And I think uh, this is one of the um, really crucial uh, elements that uh, will help Ukraine uh, become uh, further down the line, uh, become a member of the Euro-Atlantic and European uh, family of nations. So um, the work, as Mariana uh, highlighted, continues. And as I said, um, we stand ready to provide further support. We recognize that there will be probably quite a number of amendments uh, to, the, uh, to the draft uh, as, as the parliament prepares for the second reading. And we are open to engage with uh, Ukrainian uh, parliamentarians as appropriate to support their work. Uh, of course, once the law is approved, hopefully in the near future, uh, the very difficult task of implementation will begin. And this will require continued focus, uh, strategic thinking, and of course, uh, resources. Um, this, this is where we, uh, we will also um, be very uh, supportive. And I think we will uh, take a hard look at what, we, what, in a, what additional support we can offer um, Ukraine as it starts the uh, implementation phase. Um, my final point will just be uh, a point about strategic communications and uh, clearly reforms of this magnitude uh, and of historic importance uh, require the full support of the citizens of a country. And that's why these reforms uh, need to be transparent and well communicated. And I think that events such as this event today uh, contribute significantly to this process. Thank you, Al Alexander. I will conclude here uh -huh. and I look forward to, to the discussion. Thank you, Alexander. You are staying with us and uh, we do believe that all our efforts, now preparation for the second reading, so will bring the positive results and will make Ukraine closer to membership action plan with the adoption of state security service reform. So, and uh, I also would like to express our gratitude to the European Union advisory mission in Ukraine and would like to give a floor to Auntie Yuhani Hartikainen, 
I hope I spell correct. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Yohan. So, um, could you please reflect uh, your vision of the reform and uh, how you, um, your uh, mission assists Ukraine to make it possible also, and um, what are the most Im important aspects of the SBU reform for the Ukraine-EU cooperation, also taking into account the visit of the Prime Minister of Ukraine to Brussels, and also in the constitution we incorporated both our, strate uh, our strategic goal to become member of the EU and NATO. So please, um, uh, Mr. Anti Yuhani Hartikainen, so um, what are the European standards for the security service to be uh, implemented under the reform? Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and, and good afternoon for uh, all of you. Of course, uh, like you, most likely have already recognized that we have been uh, working very closely together with the NATO representation in Ukraine, with the, uh, with the EU delegation and uh, 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 the US embassy uh, in the format of this international advisory group. And, and for this reason, uh, I think that uh, you are not uh, surprised that uh, my comments are very similar than those of uh, Alexander's uh, uh, comments, what uh, he just uh, presented before uh, me. Of course, uh, we also also welcome very, very much this approval of this draft law of the uh, security uh, service of Ukraine in, in this uh, repeated uh, first reading. And we consider it uh, as a very positive uh, step toward uh, the reform of this uh, service. Of course, we all know that, uh, like also Marina very well explained, that there's a lot of work uh, ahead before uh, this uh, second reading. And we, we tried and we would like to bring it uh, closer to these uh, Euro-Atlantic principles and uh, best uh, uh, practices. <laughs> I think that the key message for, uh, for the so society is that uh, uh, this reform is uh, about uh, ensuring that this service is, is better equipped and better connected with its uh, Western partners to protect the security of Ukraine and its uh, citizens. That we would like to uh, make it higher quality service and not to weaken that service because it has been meanwhile Meanwhile, uh, in, in public said that uh, it would be like a weakening of, of this, uh, this service when, when we, we go for this, this reform, but it's vice versa, we want to make it stronger. <coughs> then, uh, okay, that uh, Alexander already mentioned that this current, uh, current draft law enshrines these uh, key reform steps that, okay, that first of all, this facing out this pre-trial investigative authority, okay, there is this... Uh, transition period uh, uh, till 2024. And then, of course, this, this, uh, these tasks should be then uh, 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 transferred to the other agencies. That, that would be, uh, of course, a big challenge, but we are also ready to support uh, in, in this process and also to set up this, uh, this Bureau of Economic uh, Security. Then this uh, downsizing and uh, demilitarization, they are of course uh, big, big efforts and surely politically very challenging in, in this situation. We understand this. And then then uh, it's very important to focus this uh, abolishment of this uh, directorate K and, and then also redistribute uh, its uh, functions. Uh, and then, then we when, like also, also Alexander mentioned these, uh, <coughs> let's say, concerns, uh, uh, what, we, what we have, uh, then we have also some concerns regarding these uh, security service, like uh, excessive uh, powers uh, introduced, uh, introduced in, in this uh, draft law, and uh, we consider that they could uh, potentially infringe uh, uh, on in human rights and, and fundamental freedoms. And just to mention a few of these, these issues, like, uh, for example, this uh, automatic access to databases or possibility to block uh, uh, websites and, and uh, revocation of broadcasting licenses and so on. And then, okay, there's also this access to public and, and private premises without uh, 
or even without court order and so on. Then it was also also mentioned by Alexander that uh, that we, they need to that they need to little bit uh, work uh, further on 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 some uh, definitions of, of key uh, terms in in uh, or terminology in in this uh, draft law. For example, we should know exactly what does it mean uh, these national terms national security, and we should not also also strengthen this uh, security service uh, law enforcement functions uh, and mandate beyond what has been envisaged uh, uh, earlier. Then we also see that this uh, judicial and financial control, there is some room for uh, development. It should be defined more uh, robustly. And uh, then, of course, we have also some concerns related to, to their, their powers to use force uh, segment of the security service uh, staff to public and private uh, institutions. And then uh, also lack of clarity in, in, in role of security service in classified uh, information. And then we have this uh, also extremely important topic is this parliamentary oversight. And uh, of course, we see that uh, absolutely uh, Verhof Narada should set up this standalone committee with the oversight powers over security and intelligence agencies. As it has been foreseen within this adopted law on intelligence. Because we think that without this proper oversight, this security service reform will be incomplete. Then, of course, Okay, we have a lot of work, uh, work ahead, uh, and then when, when this law, let's hope that it will happen now this spring when it will be adopted and, and signed, then this implementation uh, will be a key aspect. And uh, of course, we can discuss this later on, but what I can uh, ensure at, at, the, at, at the moment is that our mission, we stand ready to support uh, this process once uh, it, it begins and uh, of course now we are very interested to support uh, uh, Marina and, and Mariana and, and uh, her team in, in, uh, in, in uh, finalizing this draft law and, and preparing uh, it for the, for the second reading. Uh, then uh, I, I'm, I'm not exactly aware that what kind of discussions they they are actually having today in, in Brussels uh, when they have this association uh, council council there ongoing. But uh, I have seen uh, some uh, some like uh, talking points uh, from the EU side, and I know that the security service uh, draft law issue and this reform issue will be will be raised there. And and uh, Ukrainian uh, prime minister and. Uh, this Ukrainian delegation will be encouraged to go ahead with this uh, reform. Thank you very much. Thank you also so much. Um, I think uh, now it's uh, important uh, to, to give the floor to Vitali Shabunin, who represents the Anti-Corruption Action uh, Center. This is the organization which is um, one of the key driver among civil society uh, advocating the state security service reform, knowing that with the state security service reform, we could see more trust to Ukraine and also more investment, because there were a lot of cases when SBU just mixed its function and was attacking the business, which was not good for the Ukraine's uh, reputation. So, Vitaly, uh, how to fully deprive the SBU of the investigation, uh, investigative function and how to ensure absence of political criminal interference in the work of the uh, state uh, security uh, service? Because because um, we also have seen a lot of positive uh, examples when um, uh, officers of SBU, especially encountering um, uh, state betrayal or separatist move uh, in the eastern um, Ukraine in the Russian hybrid warfare. So, but uh, unfortunately, without this reform, so what is 
the plan of your organization or the coalition of NGOs to support people like Mariana in the parliament to see that this law finally and the 30 years of renewed independence will be adopted and this will be our, uh, how to say, achievement um, for the 30 years of um, uh, renewed independence and also our important step to receive the membership uh, action plan. So please, the floor is yours, Vitaly. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm not sure that our public support will help Marianne in the parliament. I think it was better. Uh, but first sure. of all, I would like to give great thanks for uh, Mariana, you are a very brave woman, and frankly speaking, you picked up the fight uh, many others don't even want to think about, especially in the previous parliament. And it was really uh, courageous, and from um, ANTAC and other NGOs, we will do all possible for you to succeed in this fight, because it's first of all your fight. I mean, in the, in the understanding of uh, who is leading the fight. We will just help you there. And frankly speaking for colleagues from international side, I'm really sorry that we still need to speak about the reform. It should be done at least four years before. But it is as it is. I'm not sure we should speak here in details about the reform because we all stand on a common ground. And it is very uh, easy to get the um, results Anna you want to have. We just need to push the uh, bill in a second region. So easy, just push it to the second region. I'm joking here. Uh, as you know, Antak's role is to advocate the reforms, and I think there is no place in this discussion to advocate, and there's no need to advocate the reform, um, we all stand on the same, on the same ground. Um, if you're not against it, I just will switch to Ukraine to speak for those one who are listening to the discussion from the Ukrainian side, just to send them a few messages, um, uh, which I hope will give them more understanding of the situation we stand now. So I will use Ukraine. Vitaly, just a second. So uh, for those who are watching in English, you should uh, take another link with translation into Ukrainian. Uh, especially we, have, we still have Philippe from France, uh, uh, from a uh, member of French delegation to Parliamentary Assembly of NATO and our uh, speakers from uh, NATO representation office uh, um, and European Union advisory mission in Ukraine. So uh, because Vitaly now uh, moved to Ukrainian language. I just want those ones from Ukraine uh, will hear my message as clear as possible and will understand them as clear as possible. I would like to thank to Mariana, who experienced a huge pressure. Uh, especially, I would like to thank to her on behalf of the leadership of the uh, Security Service of Ukraine, and I would like uh, uh, to, to say my message to the leadership of the security service uh, in Ukraine, you did naughty things during this campaign. We can have different views on the reform, but the ways how you presented your opinion is very bad. Uh, especially, I mean, the black information campaign against those who think differently from you. I would like to remind to the leadership of the security service that he is appointed by the parliament of Ukraine. And he is, uh, he has to report to the parliament, he is accountable to the parliament. Uh, the same I would like to say to Mariana. Those groups in SBU who counteracted to reform. These are not the entire SBU. But those people who did that, these are the worst part, the worst part of stuff 
in SBU. But in SBU, we have many diligent people, many diligent officers who are from, from counterintelligence, counterterrorist department. They are extreme supporters of all your efforts and wish you all the best. I would, I would like to say to those groups in the SBU who try to counteract to reform, I, I believe that a ge geopolitical choice of President Zelensky is quite clear and it allows no options to you. And his position and, and the position of our international partners is also quite clear as to the reform of the security service of Ukraine. This means that uh, Mariana's effort and uh, those who support this reform they inevitably be successful, while those who try to prevent this reform from implementation, they simply will lose. And I w wish you to apply common sense and to be guided with your strive to survive. And I encourage you to become a part of this reform instead of making opposition to it. Uh, because this is the uh, healthy logic to act like this. And this will allow you to achieve some positive result while your attacks on Mariana and her uh, team would bring you to very grave results. If you will have any other questions, I will be glad to answer them. Thank you, Vitaly. I think after your uh, speech in Ukrainian language, so let me translate uh, diplomatically. So you are warning those who are against the state security service reform, uh, who works at the SBU, uh, not to um, block the re uh, reform and not to attack people like Mariana, uh, uh, reform-minded. And uh, I agree with Alexander Vinnikov that it's really important that during the second reading, Ukrainian parliament, the session hall, will be united both from mono-majority MPs to uh, democratic opposition, political parties, European solidarity also, Holos, because I think that state security um, service reform, it's uh, about the future of Ukraine, it's about the membership action plan, it's about the investment uh, opportunities. So definitely we would like to see that leaders of uh, democratic opposition will join to the working group, will be very helpful to Mariana, providing her with comments but not to, uh, how to say, submit as much, uh, as many as possible amendments and to see these uh, amendments uh, spam, spam uh, which will not allow uh, to speed up the process of consideration. So, Mariana, uh, could you please tell us about some probably obstacles or your um, vision? Uh, of course, maybe it's um, uh, not the right question when, 
uh, it could happen, but I agree with Alexander that uh, our president, Mr. Zelensky, uh, with uh, sanctions through the uh, National Security and Defense Council, not to allow Russian propaganda to discreditate Ukrainian reforms, and uh, it was very right decision of um, uh, a National Council of Security and Defense, and also his statements supporting this reform. So um, how do you see the chances to adapt and, sorry, when? When do you see it's possible to adapt and um, uh, what are the obstacles and how to help you? Please. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, by the way, uh, our committee um, fully supported uh, the decision of the president concerning sanctions. Uh, it was on the last, uh, during the last meeting of the committee. Uh, who, uh, different comments uh, were here, and first, firstly, I just need to thank, uh, to thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, all the partners, uh, NATO mission, uh, European Union representation uh, for the support, for the um, best practices uh, and uh, uh, sharing of the competence uh, while working uh, on the draft. Uh, we will uh, request additional expert opinion uh, while preparing for the final, uh, for the second reading, and it will be soon. Uh, so just uh, uh, I hope uh, uh, we, uh, we will interact in this model uh, to get the best uh, final variant as possible in these circumstances, in this state, uh, and uh, just just to get uh, to get the best as we we can uh, together. Uh, also, um, speaking about uh, co uh, commentary from uh, Vitaly, uh, thank you for the support. Just do not do it very publicly, yes, because we have uh, rather uh, rather complicated uh, uh, our, uh, rather complicated environment even in the parliament. Uh, but we need to state, of course, uh, that uh, such uh, transformation as security service transformation need to unite as uh, uh, members of parliament from different fractions because it's transformation for years and uh, it's transformation which uh, influence uh, state uh, security state uh, condition dramatically uh, so i hope that uh, such uh, value of um, and such support level will be for uh, also during the second reading i hope but uh, firstly, of course, it, we need at least the result, the passing of the uh, second reading. And it's, uh, it's not uh, just like, uh, uh, not, it's not no, uh, light process. We still have a lot of challenges and, of course, still have resistance in the system. Uh, they just uh, are changing now some tactics. Uh, I hope also, just additional hope that uh, um, more, um, our interaction will be in more and more constructive way. Um, but you see what uh, the observation is that uh, there are a lot of good specialists and even um, some loyalty from the leadership of security service to work on some um, points of uh, the law but from other side we have some kind of deep state of security service which is about the resist uh, also resistant uh, resistance and the other part of deep state is also as uh, for the major many different specialists and even departments which understand the request of for changes and wants to have the proper capacity to be the proper the uh, cap um, capable counterintelligence etc so it just it's a process it's a life it's a process of transformation we need to go this way uh, and speaking about the timeline as i previously said uh, it's uh, uh, about uh, so spring is for, for security service transformation law uh, we need about two months uh, of uh, a big tempo uh, 
to to make the draft of the final draft and then to make all the bureaucratic procedures and then the uh, the next stage of tempo may i say in this way the next stage depends on all the political conglomerate uh, and political will and work with fractions uh, and risks etc 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 so the goal is to finish spring with the new security service law and then to get the sign from the president uh, and also this goal wise in, in this timeline that uh, it's about the budget no, nothing can happen with uh, without resources so we need to plan the budget for uh, 2022 and this is planning is uh, at least uh, it starts actually now but uh, the fire uh, is just like main stage it's uh, summer and um, and autumn uh, to get the proper budget for the new security for the relaunching of security service and to in that case 2022 2023 and 2024 as uh, they were, uh, will be the years of transformation because actually the concept is to make more uh, during the three years and then to uh, to moder just to finish uh, for uh, some aspects for uh, during our uh, next years. Thank you, Mariana. So it seems like a good plan. So I think before the celebration of the uh, regaining uh, 30 years of uh, independence, we definitely, I hope I'm belonging to the optimist. And now it seems like the coalition of support has yes. formed. And in this coalition, we have MPs, both from uh, ruling uh, uh, mono-majority and democratic opposition, civil society, our international partners, and of course officers in the state security service reforms because there yes. are a big part of officers who really not corrupt they are true patriots and they are on our side and it's i think it's really important in 2020 during the parliamentary assembly of nato in kiev to um, deliver the package of, uh, com uh, of uh, uh, comprehensive reform package. And Alex Vinikov knows better about this package. Uh, what is achieved? Yes, please, Mariana. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, I'm very sorry, just a small remark. Um, there was some, some joke about non-governmental organization, but uh, I need just two moments. Uh, it's quite obvious when in such a uh, young state without the, uh, some pressure, some proactive position from non-governmental organization, uh, uh, radical changes. I, I will not even uh, call them radical, but uh, real changes of the blocks of uh, how the state is functioning, uh, they are impossible. Uh, so uh, actually uh, in taking into account uh, uh, this uh, uh, opportunities and this point uh, even uh, before the f uh, even between the first and second reading we still are working in the uh, way of uh, working group with uh, not only uh, members of parliament but also those uh, uh, stakeholders that i named firstly uh, it's also d different ministries and non-governmental organization because uh, actually law it's an open process it's not secret and uh, um, all the amendments will be uh, uh, worked also in the group. So it's opportunity for everybody within the common sense uh, to join, to finalize the project. Uh, so uh, it's just a remark I wanted to say. And, uh, so, and also the next um, very important moment, and it was articulated now, uh, we now, and we are thankfully to this, we have the political will of the president. And frankly, it was also some kind of way for him, uh, not just, I will not say to understand the need, uh, but to, understand, uh, to, uh, to see the overall picture of the problem and also uh, that this way should be happened. And uh, thank you, Mr. President, for this, uh, that we have this political will now. <laughs>
Something like that. Thank you, Mariana. Definitely uh, having political will on behalf of uh, president, also support in the parliament from uh, key political factions, because you need 226 um, yes. minimum <laughs> votes, and also equipped with the support um, expertise from our international partners, uh, good patriotic professional officers or experts from uh, state security service and from civil society organizations. So I think you have a dream team uh, to prepare for the second reading. And um, I do believe that since today our ENTS Network and uh, Anti-Corruption Action Center. We started a series of discussion, Ukraine-NATO Vision 2030, and we will continue this public discussion and also working group meetings. And also, uh, since we rescheduled our Zero Corruption Conference, Democracy in Action Conference from last year to this year, and I hope within the next two days, we will finalize the date and also working with with um, Alexander Vinikov, with uh, US Embassy and our key strategic partners. We will also have a separate panel discussing um, Ukraine moving to membership action plan and what is um, needed like institutional reforms. So Alexander, at the end of um, our discussion, uh, now are you more optimistic um, and or you, um, you see more work have to do? And by the way, thanks for uh, promising that NATO will provide more support after the adoption of the law uh, on implementation, which is also uh, Enforcement is very important. So please, the final uh, remarks, and we will uh, finish today's our international high-level discussion. Thank you, Hannah. Well, um, <clears throat> if I weren't an optimist, I would be in the wrong in the wrong business. Um, so I, I am, I remain uh, optimistic uh, about Ukraine's future. Definitely, um, I can tell you, I've been here quite a long time. And I know that uh, reform of the SBU has been one of the most difficult and most sensitive uh, areas of reform uh, that we have been uh, communicating with our Ukrainian partners about. So I fully understand uh, how complex uh, it is to, to transform uh, and modernize the service in line with, with European and Euro-Atlantic uh, practices. Uh, at the same time, as was voiced by, by many colleagues here today, um, this is clearly an important next step on Ukraine's Euro-Atlantic and European path. Um, and it's, I think, uh, very clear that uh, NATO and the other uh, partners of, strategic partners of Ukraine are committed to standing by Ukraine and helping Ukraine every, every step of the way as it, um, as it moves from development planning to implementation of this, this um, historic reform process. And I would also like to second um, those, those comments about the um, reform-minded uh, colleagues in the security service and in other security and defense organizations. I think uh, in my years here, I've worked with many, many stakeholders um, who are extremely patriotic and extremely committed to seeing Ukraine uh, become part of the European and Euro-Atlantic family of nations. So I cannot emphasize the historic importance of this process enough, and I think it will uh, clearly stand Ukraine in good stead as it continues on its uh, Euro-Atlantic trajectory. Thank you, Alexander, and also Mr. Anti Yuhani. Would you add something at the, as a final remarks? Yeah, thank you very much. And actually, I mentioned uh, during my speech that we are going to strengthen actually our, our support for the security service reform. Uh, we have now already ongoing one recruitment. We are recruiting one uh, short-term expert uh, to, to support this reform. And now, when our new mandate will start as of uh, 1st June, just before this uh, security service uh, law will be adopted, let's hope so, 
Uh, then then uh, we are going to, in, in the new mandate, we, we are going to strengthen our support for this reform. And now this short-term expert is uh, to be deployed to, to, to plan and, and propose that how we could and uh, could support uh, this reform and make some kind of plan. And then we would go ahead with the implementation uh, as of uh, next summer. Thank you. Thank you um, to all speakers. So uh, our um, higher level international discussion, Ukraine, NATO vision 2030, and also expert debates, way forward with the state security service reform is finished for today. So let me express our gratitude, especially to Mariana for her bravery, and uh, also to uh, many thanks to Alexander and Mr. Uh, Auntie Yuhani. Uh, Harti Kainen. I think if I repeat three times more, I will finally <laughs> pro um, uh, pronounce it in the right uh, way. So, and Vitali Shabunin, and also our uh, speakers from the first panel, uh, especially the president of a parliamentary assembly of NATO, Mr. Connolly, and also a member of European Parliament, Rasa Yuknevichene, and also our um, representative of French Parliament, Mr. Philippe and Oksana Yurinets. So I think it's um, really important to work hard and to see results, and results will be a first membership action plan. In the nearest one, two years, we do believe and we will fight for this. And within a decade, I hope Ukraine and Georgia will join to uh, NATO, to the alliance, as it's written in uh, our constitution. And NATO will become even stronger, having such uh, strong members as Ukraine uh, is with a uh, unique uh, experience of our soldiers fighting military aggression and uh, also um, having uh, Georgia on board. So thanks everybody and uh, thanks Anti-Corruption Action Center and people from the Secretariat of uh, Parliamentary Assembly of NATO and uh, the previous uh, chair, uh, Mr. Madeline Moon, uh, also for helping us. Uh, thanks everybody and see you during our next discussion and Mariana, please be strong. Uh, now you have more good people with you and uh, we hope uh, we will celebrate our um, uh, 30th anniversary of uh, renewed independence having uh, very modern, very uh, good professional state security service uh, law. Uh, thanks everybody uh, for this uh, discussion today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.